Relationship Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, or ROCD, does not have to be the death sentence to your marriage or your relationship. There are ways to effectively treat relationship OCD, and there are even things that you can do yourself, totally on your own, that can make it so much better and really reduce the impact that the symptoms of ROCD has on your relationship. That's what we're talking about today, guys. I am Rachel Sloan. I help anxious people save their marriages by overcoming intrusive thoughts like those that you have with relationship OCD. In just 30 days, it really is possible to overcome those thoughts that quickly. So if you are ready to get some help silencing that anxious, obsessive, irrational voice in your head that makes you behave in those compulsive ways in your relationship, and you want to feel validated and secure in your marriage, click on the link below in the description and schedule your free strategy call with me today. All right, guys, let's jump in and talk about how you treat relationship OCD and what you can do for yourself. So first I want to review a little bit what our OCD really is. And before we jump in, just a little caveat, I don't want you to obsess over whether or not you actually have ROCD because honestly, it doesn't really matter. If you are having intrusive thoughts and anxiety that are affecting your relationship in negative ways, then it's time to do something about it. This video is for you, whether you've been diagnosed with ROCD or not. Intrusive thoughts and anxiety getting in the way of your happiness, especially in your relationship, this is for you. Okay, so don't don't worry too much about like, do I really have this or not? It's, it's not worth wasting your time on. So ROCD is a diagnosable psychological disorder. But like I just said, it doesn't really matter if you have it or not. What matters is if you have the types of intrusive anxious thoughts that characterize ROCD, then you probably want to do something about them because they tend to make your relationships difficult, unpleasant, and sometimes just downright miserable, right? It can even cause you to sabotage your relationship, drive your partner away with your anxious compulsive behavior, and you don't want that, right? You want to have a happy, fulfilling relationship. You don't want to end up getting divorced or separated or broken up. Okay, so here are some of the thoughts that are really common with relationship OCD, and there's some thoughts that you might recognize in yourself. You might worry that you're not good enough for your partner, or you might question whether or not you really love them. You might do both of those things at the same time, as odd as that sounds. You might worry that you're not good enough for them and that you don't really love them. You might worry and kind of obsess about whether or not they're the one, right? Is this my perfect match? Is this my soulmate? You'll be constantly seeking evidence of like true love or perfect love. You will compare your relationship to others and your partner to others and yourself to other people in other relationships. You may find yourself like overanalyzing or obsessing about like the details and like the small little things in your relationship and trying to decide like what they mean. Like, does it mean that he's the right one? Does it mean we should break up? Does it mean he's gonna leave me? Right, All, every like little nuance and thing he does or says. And you might find yourself creating rules for your partner and then getting really upset when your partner doesn't follow them. And this is something we tend to do so much when we're anxious in relationships, you guys. And, and it's funny because usually we create these rules and we don't even tell our partner, right? Like we have this whole manual in our brain of how our partner is supposed to act in our relationship, but they don't have that rule book. They don't have, they don't have that list of like shoulds and shouldn'ts. They don't know. And then we freak out and get mad when they don't follow it perfectly. Right? This is such a common thing. So if you are noticing any of these thoughts in yourself, then that might mean you wanna do something about these thoughts because these intrusive, anxious, obsessive thoughts get in the way of you having a happy relationship, of you feeling validated and secure in your relationship. So what do we do? How do we get rid of them? There's a couple of options. And I mean, the first one, of course, you can seek professional help. You can see a coach, you can see a therapist. This is what I do with my clients is help them overcome these thoughts so that they can enjoy and really create the kind of marriage or relationship that they want. Um, a lot of therapists will use cognitive behavioral techniques. There's a lot of great thought work techniques and NLP. There's a lot of different ways to go at managing and wrangling these intrusive and anxious thoughts. So seeking professional help, definitely an option and one the thing about getting help with these kinds of things is that you'll get results more quickly. 
you can tackle things to some extent on your own, um, but having that guidance, having that professional kind of leading you through a proven set of techniques that works will get you there so much faster and save you so much pain in your relationship on the way. But that doesn't mean there's nothing you can do. So what can you do? So if you're working on your own, or even if you are working with a therapist, you can still be spending some of your own time learning to manage your own thoughts and get control of those anxious, intrusive relationship OCD thoughts. So step one, if you're working on your own, is to start acknowledging and exploring how do these thoughts affect your relationship. So thoughts lead to feelings and feelings are just physical sensations in your body. That's all an emotion is, that's all anxiety is. So you have a thought, the thought creates a set of physical sensations in your body that you might recognize as anxiety. That anxiety leads you to take certain actions. It's what drives some of these compulsive behaviors you might notice, the overanalyzing, the obsessing, this listing of rules, right? The, the worrying, the um, you know, you might catch yourself like um, analyzing everything your partner does and says and giving them like the ninth degree when they come home, right? All of these behaviors flow from that feeling, that emotion, that anxiety. And what that leads to then are the results you get in your relationship, which is often an uncomfortable, awkward, mistrustful relationship that just circles back and gives you more and more anxiety. So if you don't like the way your relationship looks, if you don't like the way you feel in your relationship, you've got to start at the beginning. You've got to go back and change the thoughts that are creating the feeling of anxiety. Most people, most of us, want to jump in and change our actions. We want to stop behaving a certain way in a relationship to make things better. And this makes perfect sense, right? Because it's those actions you take, it's those behaviors in that relationship that are leading to the result of an unhappy marriage, of an uncomfortable romance, of a mistrustful relationship. So of course you wanna go in and change the action to get a different result, but it just doesn't work. You'll find yourself struggling and fighting to change those behaviors because the behaviors aren't just like a conscious choice to act like crazy or jealous or obsessive or anxious or worried. They are flowing from the way you feel. So as long as you feel that anxiety, those behaviors are naturally gonna flow from that. So you've gotta change the feeling of anxiety to change the behaviors. And the way that you change the feeling is to change the underlying thought. So I would just encourage you, you always have to find the thought that is leading to the anxiety, that is leading to the negative behaviors in your relationship, that is leading to the unhappy marriage. So we always start with the thought. And so one thing to do the first thing to do is understand what that thought is. And this might take some digging because we have a lot of thoughts, but there's one, there's one underlying thought that's leading to your anxiety in this moment. And that's always true in your relationship. So analyzing your own thoughts, finding that thought. And then once you recognize that it's there, you see how it's creating the anxiety, you see the way that's playing out in your relationship. Once you understand that, ask yourself a simple question. How would I like to think and feel instead? And if you're not sure, think about how you'd like to act instead. And what would you need to think and feel in order to act that way, in order for those actions to naturally flow from your thoughts and feelings? So if you did think and feel the way you'd like to, even if it doesn't seem possible to you, how would your actions change? How would the results change? How would your relationship be different? So usually, for most of us, the way we'd like to think and feel when we're feeling anxious is like dramatically different, right? Like we might have a thought like, I'm not good enough for her. And that's the thought making you anxious and making you act out in your relationship. If that's the thought, I'm not good enough for her, you might want to think I am amazing and she is so lucky to be with me, right? That would make you feel really good and really confident and you would behave differently in your relationship. But that thought is probably not accessible to you. If you really believe right now, I am not good enough for her, you're not just gonna be able to like start telling yourself you're amazing and incredible and she's so lucky to be with you because your brain is smarter than that. It's not gonna buy it. It's too big of a jump. This is why positive affirmations usually don't work for most of us. 
because we don't really believe them. We want to believe them. It sounds nice, but the brain is like, no, mm -mm. I've been telling you for years, you aren't good enough. I'm not just buying this switch, right? You can't just pull a switch like that that quickly. So what you have to do instead is find what we call a ladder thought, a thought that you can believe now that feels better than I'm not good enough for her, but is still something you can believe. It's not so far beyond that, that your brain rejects it. So you might choose a thought like, it's possible that I am good enough for her, or she chose to be with me for a reason, right? Some people tell me I'm good enough to be with her, right? You have to choose a thought that's like way less like beautiful and dramatic and satisfying than the positive affirmation, like dream thought you'd like to get to. You've got to choose one that's believable now and just doesn't make you feel quite as anxious and awful as I'm definitely not good enough for her. So it's super simple. You pick that ladder thought, you pick a thought that's a little better, doesn't make you so anxious, you practice the heck out of it. I mean, like tell it to yourself over and over and over and over, much like you would use a positive affirmation. And don't just do it when you're feeling anxious about the relationship. Do it in between, set a timer on your phone, practice this thought over and over and over. Because what you wanna do is create a new neural pathway in your brain because your default that you always go to is I'm not good enough or maybe he's not the one right whatever your worried thought is in this relationship you have practiced it so much you have this really well-worn pathway in your brain and so what you're trying to do now is create an alternate pathway but you have got to like run the road grader down that pathway over and over until it gets smooth enough for your brain to want to take that just as easily or eventually more easily than it takes the default pathway it has right now, the worried thought. So that the way you do that, the way you make that new neural pathway is to intentionally practice your new thought over and over and over again until it starts to become the default. And at first, this will just feel like repetition. It won't feel a whole lot better, but the more you do it, you'll notice a subtle shift in your emotional state, a subtle shift away from anxiety towards a more positive feeling. And you just keep going. Once that thought is kind of ingrained, can you pick a thought that's slightly more positive yet, right? So this is what I would recommend you do if you're working on your own. Get to know the thoughts creating the anxiety. Don't worry about the actions you're taking in your relationship. Don't worry about changing your behavior. Focus on what you're thinking and how you're feeling and start to make your changes there. That is where you are gonna see a real impact because once your thought shifts and you start to feel less anxious, you will naturally act differently and it will all flow really easily. If you go straight to the action and try to just change the way you act without changing the way you think, you are gonna fight and struggle and run into a lot of challenges. So if you get stuck doing this work for yourself or you feel like you just can't get to a new thought, I would highly encourage you to start spending your time acknowledging the way you feel. Because most of us fight our anxiety, we try to ignore our anxiety, we try to pretend it isn't there. Spend a little time having anxiety. Notice what it feels like in your body. And don't worry, I promise you this will not make it worse. It will not lead you to a panic attack. It will actually take some of the edge off of your anxiety if you sit with it and notice it as a set of physical sensations in your body. What do you physically feel? Because that's all anxiety is. It's a set of physical sensations between your eyes, in your head, in your throat, in your chest, in your stomach, physical sensations in your body. What are they? Notice them, sit with them. This is how I feel anxiety in my body. If you're getting stuck finding the thought or changing the thought, always come back to that feeling and be willing to have it. Let it be there, because when it's there, when you're allowing it, that's when you can get access to that thought. If you're fighting that anxiety, if you're resisting it, you're really gonna struggle to identify the thought causing it. And if you can't identify the thought that's causing it, that means you don't know what the problem is and you don't know how to change it. So use that anxiety, let it be a good thing. Let it be um, a roadmap to help you find the thought that is leading to the stress, the anxiety, the way you behave in your relationship. You have to identify that thought so that you can change that thought, so that you can change the feeling, 
change the behavior. So your anxiety is not your enemy. It's actually showing you where to do your work. So practice, if you get stuck with this, practice letting it be there and following it to the underlying thought. Remember, nothing has gone wrong, right? A feeling that anxiety is just a set of physical sensations in your body. The thought itself is just a sentence in your brain, right? It doesn't mean anything's gone wrong that you're having a thought that's making you anxious. It's just a sign that you can look in a very specific place to find a thought that you might want to change if you want to create a different relationship, if you want to stop the obsessive, intrusive thoughts of relationship OCD from sabotaging your relationship, from driving your partner away, from leading to a divorce or a separation. Getting a hold of those thoughts, understanding what's in your brain, and then changing it intentionally. That is so powerful, you guys. You don't have to change the way you behave. You just have to start changing the way you think. Everything else flows from there. So guys, just a quick recap. Relationship OCD is what we're talking about today. It's whether you have the diagnosable disorder or not, it's a useful framework to look at because relationship OCD just leads to a set of intrusive, anxious, and often compulsive thoughts about your relationship. Do I really love this person? Is he the one? I'm not good enough for her, right? This leads you to analyze and compare yourself and your relationship to others. It leads you to obsessing, overly checking up on your partner, worrying, believing things are happening that aren't necessarily happening. It really blinds you from seeing the truth of your relationship. So if you're suffering from any of these intrusive thoughts, the way to overcome them is to get really curious about them, identify the thought causing the anxiety leading to all of these behaviors, and then go in and intentionally choose another thought to practice instead, to practice on, on purpose that leads you to feel the way you want to feel. And for those of you who are joining us later, if you would like some help silencing these intrusive thoughts, and get over this relationship OCD, over this relationship anxiety quickly so that you can feel secure and validated in your marriage or relationship, click the link below and schedule a strategy call with me today because this is something that I help my clients with all the time and I promise no matter how intrusive or difficult those thoughts are, you can overcome them in just 30 days. One month. What would change in your relationship if that negative voice in your head telling you it was all wrong and never gonna work, wasn't there. In the meantime, guys, give this a try. Tell me what your thoughts are that you're practicing. I would love to hear about them in the comments. Okay, um, we are live, so if anybody has any questions, I am more than happy to answer them. Um, I'll give you guys a few minutes if there's anything you'd like me to tell you. I do see a message here from Robert Coggins. You people think too much, you know, I. I have to say, Robert, I actually agree with you entirely. It is our thoughts that screw up our relationships. And the problem is that most of us think it's the other person or that it's something wrong between us and them, that we're not compatible somehow, or that they need to change. And if they would just act different, I would feel validated, right? I would feel, I would feel more loved if they were more affectionate or used my love language or did X, Y, and Z. But it's not true. What makes me feel insecure in my relationship, what makes me feel anxious and stressed is always my thoughts. It's never my partner, it's never the dynamic, it's never the relationship itself. So yeah, Robert, I totally agree. It is thinking too much that leads to screwed up relationships. But the good thing is we can, we can overcome this. This is something we are all capable of getting control of our thoughts and our feelings, of managing our minds, of learning to think and feel the way we want on purpose. And it is, it's that overthinking that does us in. And one thing I do wanna say for anyone who's like, oh my gosh, I think too much, it's no wonder my relationships are screwed up, right? Like Robert just wrote. Um, it's not your fault either that you're thinking too much, right? These thought patterns, these anxious, intrusive thought patterns have been put there. Like throughout your whole life, they've come in from well-meaning parents, come in from your friends, from social media, from television, from movies, from books. Right? There's all these patterns of thinking, all of these beliefs about what a relationship should be, what love looks like. All of these 
ideas, all of these beliefs are just fed into our brains from the time we're little kids. So of course we latch on to some of them. Of course we practice some of them. And so we hear these thoughts, we get fed them, and then our brain's like, oh, I like that thought. Don't ask me why, because usually these thoughts don't feel good. But our brain believes they're true, and so it tells it to us over and over again. And it's kind of like we're self-indoctrinating, right? We hear this thought, we hear this belief, maybe from a couple places, but then we're the ones perpetuating it in our own minds by practicing it over and over. Well, is he the one? There's a perfect person for everyone. There's, I know there's a soulmate out there. How do I know if this is mine? Maybe this isn't mine, right? We get on these spiraling thoughts that just solidify that belief. So it is always really our own thinking, our own brains that are leading us down this path and kind of perpetuating these beliefs that aren't helpful, that are leading us into these screwed up relationships, making us feel uncomfortable, insecure, and anxious in those relationships. So yes, it is thinking too much. And what we are going to do, well, what I do with my clients and what I'm going to do in these Facebook lives and on my YouTube channel is help you guys learn to manage your minds and get control of those thoughts so that you don't think in a way that leads to a screwed up relationship. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. I'd love to hear the comments and I look forward to seeing you this evening.